What up, world? We back again. This is my story, the legendary cocaine. I was born in South Bronx, New York, and I am the son of Jerry B. Long Sr., who was a writer, arranger, and composer of Motown. We worked on such songs as Just My Imagination, Still Waters Run Deep, Smiling Faces. So music has always been in my household since I was knee high. I moved from New York when I was three years old to California. I'm growing up in Pomona. You know, you had your hardships, your social ills of suppressed environments, and I had to grow up through all that. Living with my grandmother, because most of my family, you know, was going through their hardships. In the 70s growing up, listening to your George Clintons, listening to your fat bag, your Ohio players, all that I emulated from the time I was a kid. So when the rapper was coming along, back when Grandmaster Flash and they did their thing, it was the new rock and roll. So I gravitated from practicing singing the old school cat records to incorporating the people. I would always do talent shows and kept my craft up. I can remember me singing like George Clinton in 85. And when Above the Law got signed, uh, my cousin, it's Cole 187, from a group of Above the Law, his name is Hutch. He said, man, I want you to come along with me. I did a three song demo for Easy E. And when Easy heard the stuff, he scratched his head like this. He said, you know what? I got my George Clinton. Cocaine is every bit what his name says. He's dope. You hear it, it's raw. It's gonna work. We did a three uh, artist adventure. It was Poor Broken Lonely, Above the Law, and it was Cocaine. We signed the Epic Records. And we put out my project, which was called Who Am I? Because at that time, they were scared of the name. My first single on there was called Nickel Slick Nigga, which from 1990 it came out going into 1991. Also was a movie coming along called Deep Cover. Dr. Dre had did the remix to that. Also, the NWA project had came out, which I guess appeared on that, Niggas for Life. During that time, Above the Law and Cocaine was working tightly together, and Above the Law had discovered Snoop Dogg back then, and we had to go back in and work on my album, and Snoop Dogg couldn't wait around, so he went over there to the company that Dr. Dre started, which was Death Row along with Shook. We stuck with Easy E, Dr. Dre had started Death Row. We also helped shape the Dr. Dre sound above the law of cocaine. Deal. It's no, it's undisputed that it's, it's, it's the truth that way. Back when we was doing above the law, they did something off of Sam's Curse, Black Mafia Life. I did an album called Funk Upon a Rhyme, which is by the way selling for $120 on eBay because it's considered a classic. Uh, we were touching on something that we were ahead of our time, light year group, and people really gravitated to that. Well, I myself uh, and Above the Law brought really from the funk to the game. I mean, the funk was always always here in the Parliament and George and, and Zap and different people like that. But see, we took it to a whole nother level. And uh, we didn't know exactly what we were doing outside of what we were passionate about. We didn't know that people would take to it so much, and especially in the 90s. You know, NWA was at the pinnacle of, uh, of its height as far as the NWA. And when Above the Law and, and myself, uh, Cocaine came in, uh, we just brought another essence to the whole sound of the West Coast. We put that G in the phone. And uh, people really took to it because it's something about funk music that really is ingrained to that suppression of the world. When I was with uh, Above the Law, it really started growing demographically. People started accepting it. I mean, not out, not just the West Coast. We would go to Milwaukee, Chicago. We find out people be singing our stuff, and this was before the time before the internet was really popping. Well, it was a big impact. 
because you gotta realize the music that we did were so much subject to just a region. You know, like the NWA sound, the bubble on cocaine sound with the bump. It was subject to just one region. But when it starts spreading demographically, we start doing these shows and most of the kids to be at the show would be white people. So you had white kids wearing NWA hats. You had Guns N' Roses wearing NWA hats. You had, you had, you had uh, uh, white kids running around saying, I love cocaine because he's about to fall. And it transcended and translated over to, to, to the white audience. So when it got exposed to the white audience, on a grand scale, it, it was a major impact. Because then your MTV started accepting it. And, and uh, it just it just cultivated a whole movement, man. That at that time, you had to be there to see the experience and, and see the magic and, and, and how big it was. It was nothing like it, fam. Whenever we stepped out on that stage, the audience would just be bananas, fam. And it was it was something else because. Music is a powerful element. Whenever it can, it can transcend past what we do, you know, as far as, you know, coming from a black or film, you know, it's amazing because it brings people together. The legend continues.